welcome to the um, Local Agency Formation Commission, December 6th, about 5.15. Um, so um, do you have any instructions on in-person? Uh, we have all the commissioners here tonight. So okay. we have, we're good for that, yes. Very good, all right. Ms. Patty, would you please take roll? Commissioner Ayon. Present. Commissioner Couch. Here. Commissioner Crump. Here. Commissioner Fowler. Present. Commissioner Gonzalez. Here. Commissioner McKibben. Here. Commissioner Sanders. Here. Commissioner Scrivener. Here. Commissioner Saragoza. Here. Roll call complete. Thank you. Let's all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Barbara, would you lead us? Stand. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So we need to call for approval of the minutes from the September 20th, 2023 meeting. So moved. Uh, second. Motion, motion by Couch, second by Fowler. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for, this, for the record before making your presentation. Ms. Menchaga, are there any persons interested in speaking? No. No, okay. Um, item number six, determination proceeding. There is none. However, um, we're we, changing the agenda. We have a request from Commissioner Couch that we moved closed session up to early. He has, he has to leave before the end of the meeting. Uh, so at this point, we would go to closed session. Okay. Does that require a motion? As long as no one has any objection to it, does it require a motion? Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is it going to last long? No. <laughs> well, it depends on what happens in closed session. No objection. No objection. Okay. So regarding closed session, this is the only room available to hold, hold closed session with commissioners, uh, commissioner online. At this time, we ask everyone who is not on the commission to exit the room. Uh, for those online, we can place you in the virtual waiting room until closed session is finished. Um, if anyone has called in, there's not an opportunity to place you on hold. We'll have to say goodbye, but I don't think there's anyone who's called in. We will reopen the room and bring anyone back from the virtual rating room after closed session is complete and announce any results as required. Yes. Uh, the commission, the commission discussed a new contract for uh, the executive officer uh, in substance, it includes a five-year term. Um, it, it can be terminated at any time by either party, if terminated without cause uh, by the commission. There's a severance um, uh, amount payable to the uh, executive officer. It's payable monthly. Uh, it's, not, it's 12 months um, or less if you get a job before that year is up. Um, the... Um, most everything else is the same. Now there's a there's an uh, an annual extension each year, so it's always a five year contract. But you can stop that extension if you ever want to. Um, the um, everything else is pretty much the same as in his existing contract. We're going to send this to a uh, HR attorney uh, to review what I've written out and and the the, the different. The differences in the terms that are in the one you have in your packet. Uh, in the meantime, I think it was request suggested that we can increase his salary tonight, uh, effective uh, January 1, rather than having to wait to get an HR attorney on board and then review it. Um, and so we can do that. If you want to, um, if there's a motion to increase his salary by 4%, um, I, I think the, the chair can hear, entertain that motion. 
motion to increase. Okay, hold on just a moment. I do have a correction because the yep. uh, severance detail was not monthly, it was bi biweekly. Uh, bi-weekly being every other week? Or every yeah, every two, every two weeks. Correct. Okay, okay, yeah. all right. That's so not, my, my not on a monthly basis, but my on mistake. a bi-weekly yeah. basis. On the regular payroll schedule. Right, Got it. yeah, Got exactly. It. Thank okay. You. Thank you. So now we can entertain a motion that to approve recording audience. in progress. Hmm? That makes it easier on okay. Yeah. Make a motion to increase his salary by 4% okay. starting January 1st. Motion by Commissioner Couch. Second, Fowler. Second by McKibben. It was Crump. 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 Well, Crump. Crump. Couch made the motion, did he? No, no, it was Crump. 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 The Crump second. <laughs> okay, let me get this straight. Who made the motion? Crump. Crump. Yeah. Commissioner Crump uh, made the motion. Actually, Commissioner Fowler made the second. Okay. I thought it was Commissioner McKibben, okay. but I didn't hear it correctly. So okay. I did hear Barbara. So we're going to say that Commissioner Fowler seconded the motion. Okay. Got All it. in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Good. Thank okay. you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Man, that was painful. <laughs> God. Okay. So moving on now to um, item number seven, notice of public hearing. Um, Pursuant, it's regarding the sphere of influence five-year questionnaire review, the pursuant to government code section 56425G, on or before January 1, 2008, and every five years thereafter, the commission shall, as necessary, review and update each sphere of influence. Yeah, you don't have to read all those. That's good. Good. Uh, once again, Rebecca, the enforcer, Moore, as we are now required to address her, has personally guided many of these districts question by question towards completion of this requirement. Tonight we bring you 14 additional five-year sphere of influence questionnaire reviews. 13 are expected to have no sphere change in the next five years. One district, the Hatchby Resource Conservation District, continues to search for funding to annex the area that was formerly the inactive Kern Valley Resource Conservation District. The district did not get funding in the latest round of grants from the Department of Conservation, but will be in line for them in the next round. The annexation of this area will require a sphere of influence amendment. Therefore, it's my recommendation to receive the sphere of influence questionnaires and accept analysis of the staff. That they were part of the, what I'm saying is 13 of them do not appear that they will need a sphere of influence. Tehachapi will, or likely will. So I'm, point, I'm just pointing out that that is a possibility. So if I can rephrase that, all we're doing is waiting for them to determine whether or not they'll get grant funding to do that. Correct. Right. And they, they did not get it in the last round of grant funding, but they're, they will try again. We have, a conference, we have a phone call with them tomorrow. Okay. Do any of the other commissioners have any questions or comments about this? If not, I need a motion and a second to um, approve the review. Motion. Second. Okay, who made the motion? Ayon. Please say your last name when you do. I'm sorry, I don't know everyone's voice. No problem. Thank you. Second. Motion by Ayon. Second by Zaragoza. Okay, motion by Ayon. Second by Zaragoza. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Motion carried. See why we want you to stay in the chair. These guys in order. I'm telling you, got to crack the whip. Okay, moving on to 7B, City of Wasco Municipal Services Review. Um, municipal Service Review update of the City of Wasco's current sphere of influence boundary in order to prepare and to update spheres of influ influence in accordance with. Uh, GC subsection 56425, the commission shall conduct a service review of the municipal services provided in the county or other appropriate area designated by the commission. Uh, Madam Executive. Chair, I'm going to have to recuse myself. Yes, I of course. I represent the city of Wasco. Thank you. We will wait a moment until he exits the room. Please take your time. Tom, would you close the door? <laughs> it's still an opening meeting, but he uh, he recused himself. No, I mean, he can't hear. 
<laughs> he can't. He can't. He can't hear you anyway. Okay. Well, and I understand it is an open meeting, so we should have an open door. But yeah, gotcha. I never do anything right. Thank you. Okay. So, Executive Officer Knox. Yes, Wasco pops up again. Uh, I would like to start by recognizing and thanking Carrie Cobb, the Community Development Director for the City of Wasco, and her staff. Uh, Carrie not only put together a solid document, she put up with my dated history of my hometown with patience and grace. <laughs> Carrie is here to answer any questions the Commission may have. There's a lot going on in Wasco. High speed rail continues their construction. The city is adding a police department for the first time in my knowledge in over three decades. Uh, they will have their own police department. New water infrastructure is in the works and much more. The MSR answers seven questions and they are growth in population, addre addressing disadvantaged unincorporated communities, capacity of public fa uh, facilities, services and infrastructure, financial ability to provide services, status of and opportunities for shared facilities, accountability in government structure and operational efficiencies, and any other matter related to effective and efficient delivery of services as required by commission policy. Out of these questions came re eight recommendations. The first four are administrative to the process, and five through eight, which are the ones that really matter, uh, are specific to infrastructure and service provision. Five is to improve the city's current and future water development through construction of four new replacement wells and two water storage tanks, as well as acquisition or construction of two or three new water wells to provide adequate water supply. Complete six, complete demolition of the old labor camp property on the east side of the railroad tracks uh, and clear property and market for future industrial development. Seven, complete formation of the city of Wasco Police Department and bring into full operation by early 2024. Construction of new city operational facilities include a new police department facility, a new animal control facility, new public works maintenance facility, and new administrative facility. With as my recommendation to adopt by resolution proceeding number 1791, the Wasco Area Municipal Service Review, along with the environmental document. Thank you. Is there any public comment? Seeing none, any commission comment or questions? Motion to approve. Second, couch. Zach. <laughs> First. <laughs> motion by Scrivener, second by Couch. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. I'll go get Tom. Yes. Good, good idea. Of course. Yes, sir. You won't believe what we got away with. <laughs> <laughs> what I don't know, never. It's all Zach's idea. You'll find out. It was all Zach's <clears throat> Okay. Moving on to agenda item number eight, commission items, appointment of chair and vice chair. Um, Executive Officer Knox. Yes. It has become a customary practice to rotate the chair from among the four categories of commissioners, city, county, public, and special district. T to maintain the rotation, the commission last year appointed Commissioner Ione as vice chair to represent cities. If the commission chooses to ma re uh, maintain the custom, Commissioner Ione would move to chair with the county being next in line as vice chair. Commissioner Scribner has indicated he'd be willing to serve if selected. Uh, these are one year terms and to be clear, any commissioner can put their name into nomination as a process is strictly customary. So my recommendation is, is I don't have one. Uh, while I help facilitate the process, I don't pretend to have the power to pick my bosses. <laughs> with that, I turn it back to the chair. Okay. Is there any public comment regarding the appointment of a chair or vice chair? Any commission comment or questions? I'll move the appointment of uh, Saul Ione as chair and Zach Scribner as vice chair. Second Fowler. A uh, motion by Couch, second by Fowler. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Does that mean I can move from the chair now? No. Oh. No. Threats, threats, threats. Well, as a media 
past chair, you may be called on again to serve as chair if someone's not available. I thought that would be vice chair's job. That is second in line, and you would be third. Conspiracy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, conspiracy. <laughs> okay, moving on to um, 8B, uh, draft policy, municipal service review. Executive Officer Knox. Yes, uh, the policy committee met at 4.30 uh, today and discussed the policy on municipal service reviews. Uh, the recommendation was to um, have legal review of what was presented and to soften some language about how you present um, uh, re requiring agencies to do their own uh, municipal service review so it's not so uh, harsh and so I will work on, on, on that and we will be bringing that back to the commission itself for approval. Did I mention legal review? You did three times. Okay, good. Yeah. Good job. Okay, thank you so much. Moving on to uh, agenda item number nine, general business approval of the monthly expense list 2308. Any commission comment or questions? Move approval. Couch, Fowler. Okay, Couch uh, moved. Uh, Fowler made the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Approval of a monthly expense list number 23-09. Any commission comment or questions? Motion approved. Second. M motion by Scrivener, second by Couch. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Approval of monthly expense list number 2310. Any commission comment or questions? Motion to approve Gonzalez. Fowler second. Motion to approve by Gonzalez, second by Fowler. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. And now we are looking to the 2021-2022 audit. Executive Officer Knox. Yeah, the audit for fiscal, fiscal year 2022 and 2023 have been completed by the accounting firm of Brown Armstrong. I was going to point out some key statements that from the audit, but I will let the expert say nice things about us. Simply put, we did good. Uh, here on behalf of Brown Armstrong is L Lindsay Zimmerman. Lindsay is another former Wasconian. Here we go with Wasco again. And was one of the better athletes to come out of Wasco High School. At least that's what her dad told me. Uh, for those who might, not, might have a long memory, Lindsay's dad, Fred West, was a Wasco City Council member for many years and served on LAFCO from 2022 to 2020, not 2022, 2012 <laughs> to 2014. Lindsay will provide a summary of the audit, share the findings, and answer any questions. So, Lindsay, welcome. Good evening. Thank you, Chair and Commissioners. Just want to say, first of all, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule for me to present the audit results. I'll keep this short and sweet, too. <laughs> um, uh, on the uh, agenda, we have I have the scope of services that we provided. I'll go over our audit timeline and the critical dates list. And then I'll go over to the heart, which is the audit results, and have to report that they're nice and good. Our scope of services is to pr provide an audit of current LAFCO's financial statements in accordance with GAS and GAS, which is generally as accepted auditing standards in the US of A, and also government, government auditing standards. We also report on these, what we call the SAS 114 letter, required communication letter to you as the board. And we also report on internal controls over financial reporting and compliance and any other matters. In terms of the timeline, we performed our field work the week of August 21st. At that time, we performed detailed walkthroughs and understanding of key accounting areas, as well as substantiated all balances and um, accounts a, in a material basis. We also updated minutes and agreements. We also performed some confirmation processes to validate those balances. We looked at any new GASB statements, which are Government Accounting Standard Board statements, and have to report that none of those applied this year, so we didn't have to go into detail with the leases that we did last year. 
And also, we go through the financial statement review process where we have our manager review it, also our par par me as a partner review it, and then we have what we call a cold or technical partner come in and review to make sure we have dotted all of our I's and crossed our T's to perform the right audit. And we have issued an audit opinion on November 10th. And for the heart of my presentation, we have the results, which I'm happy to report. We have a, an unmodified or clean opinion on the financials as a whole. We also looked at the internal controls and happy to report that we have no noncompliance, no material weaknesses, no significant deficiencies, or any other control deficiencies identified. And as for the report to the board, the SAS 114 letter, we looked at our signi the significant estimates and details in terms of the presentation in the financials and the disclosures, where we looked at the right of use leases and the lease liabilities, as well as the net pension liabilities, and made sure that those were calculated accurately in terms of the actuarial assumptions. Also happy to report, we had no difficulties with management, no corrected or uncorrected misstatements, no disagreements with management. We got a signed rep letter saying the financials are their responsibility, and we come in as independent auditors to present the audit results, and also no other finding uh, audit issues or findings. And then with that, I want to open up to any questions. <laughs> yes. So are there Ms. Zimmerman, I have a quick question. <laughs> Do you not own an orange suit? <laughs> you know, it's on my list now. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Thank you. Any I, other questions from the commissioners? I have two questions, actually. Sure. Uh, I gave this to these, these two her beforehand, so she knows they're coming. Uh, <laughs> for the year, we came in under budget, but once adjustments are made, it appears that the commission lost money. Can you explain how that happens? Yes, yeah, so I looked back through the budget and the budget to actual statements and saw that some of the budgeted revenues did not come in as budgeted. And so the revenues that came in were about 101000 under budget. But although the expenses were under budget, they were still 76 or so thousand, um, let me just tell 72000 under budget. Um, so there's just that difference of the anticipated revenue not coming in, but also, the expenses were still under budget, but not as much as what the revenue didn't come in as. Got it. And one more. Uh, are there better ways to budget for such variable expenses as the CalPERS unfunded liability, which swings so rapid, so much from year to year? Yeah, I get that question a lot. Uh, it seems like CalPERS is all over the place with their calculations. Uh, it really depends on the market and how uh, the investments are doing and all that. And um, they look at in detail uh, the, the, their investment return, which decreased this year to 6.9%. It used to be 7.5%. Uh, so when they re reduce that rate, it makes the liabilities go up because they can't provide enough return to draw down on that, that liability. Um, and so <clears throat> it's kind of difficult uh, unless you want to keep paying down extra, which you guys did do this year, which was, was great. So I think that would be my only suggestion if you have the expendable cash to pay it down a little bit. But yeah, CalPERS is, they're all over the place. <laughs> okay. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> when he mentioned that you were a good athlete mm -hmm. that started ringing a bell, and maybe <laughs> I don't know. the nephew that was uh, oh, yeah. inducted, and I think you were inducted at the same time as mm -hmm. me. Yes, yeah. yeah. So I got in for, um, uh, well, myself for basketball and tennis and softball, and then I also got in a, a basket. It doesn't matter, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy Wasco High and sports and everything. <laughs> but yeah, fun. Thank you, Lindsay. Yeah, no Any other public comment? Any other commission questions or comments? Motion to receive file. Second. Okay, this actually doesn't require a motion or a vote. It does not. No. But thank you for that. It does on the Board of Supervisors. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> Okay. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you. 
Okay, so moving on to uh, the 2024 commission schedule, approval of commission meeting schedule for 2024, Executive Officer Knox. Yeah, after bugging City of Bakersfield Assistant City Manager Hallen about the possibility of moving the commission meetings back to the fourth Wednesday of the month, the city decided to keep their meetings on the second and the fourth Wednesdays. This leaves us with continuing to meet on the third Wednesday as proposed, the proposed schedule reflects those dates and keeps a traditional 10 meeting schedule with the commission dark in July and combined November, December meetings after Thanksgiving. While, it, while I left it on the schedule, there is not a proceeding that will be ready for the January meeting. The only administrative item would be the selection of a budget and policy committee for next year. Unless I hear differently from the commission, it, this doesn't rise to the level of getting everyone together for five minutes. Can we wait till we February to do that? No, we can, yes. Okay. Nope, no, it's good you brought that up. I appreciate it, really. <laughs> uh, then my recommendation is to approve as presented, and also I will be canceling the, the January meeting. Okay. Um, any public comment? Any commission comment or questions? I have a can I? Well, go ahead. No, I was just he, he was going to make a, a motion to approve, but if you have a comment or a question, we need to hear from you. Is it open for just comments from the commission right now, or should I wait? Yeah, it, it is open for comments okay. if you have a comment or question. I wanted to um, just let everybody know, <laughs> for those of you who did not attend the recent Cal AFCO conference, which was uh, in Monterey, um, it was quite uh, exciting. And, uh, so, I Vince? This is, uh, doesn't have anything to do with the uh, commission schedule. Oh, no. Can you leave that for the end of the meeting? Yes. Okay, thank you. Sorry about so that. motion <laughs> by Couch. Second. Second by Scrivener. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Uh, the next on the agenda is the 2023 legislation end of session report. Commission, I mean, uh, Executive Officer Knox. Uh, the report speaks for itself to, as to the volume of bills that are addressed in a year. I'm not going to take up the time on each, on each of the individual bills, but there's something specific you will want to ask a question about. I'm happy to do so. Okay. Any commissioner have any questions about the uh, legislation report? Okay. Received and filed. Thank you. Uh, moving on, Lost Hills CSD withdrawal. I recently received an inquiry from the Bakersfield Californian asking if Wonderful has pulled back on their attempt to create a community service district in Lost Hills. I assure the paper that that, that is not the case. Wonderful is full steam ahead with a new map and legal description. And for several reasons, I asked Wonderful to withdraw and resubmit a new application. Because the map is being redrawn, it requires both LAFCO and the county to go through almost the entire process again. Map approval, assessor's report, assessor's report, elections, list of voters, tax split negotiations with the CAO's office, new, new notifications to voters and landowners, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the commission does not need to act on the withdrawal. As executive officer, I accept the withdrawal and inform the commission, which I'm doing now. The earliest a new proceeding will likely come before the commission for consideration will be in March or April of 2024. So we're several months out. Thank you. Okay, and the last item on the agenda, uh, executive officer miscellaneous items. Can you put the list of? Uh, Mr. Rice is gonna put on the screen a list or the numbers of what we have accomplished in this last year. We've been doing this a number of years now showing you the number of annexations. Um, even I have, I'm having a hard time reading that. Okay. We have 182 active agencies, 175 where are the principal agency. There you go, that's better. 11 incorporated cities, uh, 76 dependent county service areas, 89 agencies, we handled 26 proceedings, uh, one formation that we processed and are in process processing. <coughs> 
two annexations, four detachment, detachments, two dissolutions, one extension of services, uh, 12 resolutions, three protest hearings, one sphere of influence amendment, 35 sphere of influence reviews, one municipal service review, and uh, we have inquiries on 23 other uh, proceedings that are coming our way. Uh, down at the end, I mentioned that Mr. Rice is plotting uh, all the new maps, um, all, all the former maps, to make sure they're accurate, and he's been through 156 of them so far. Uh, so he's, we're, we're continuing to work on that. This list is not as robust as it has been in last year's, and I mentioned at the beginning of the year I expected fewer proceedings, but that they would be more complicated. Uh, the Probably the, the best example of that is the Lost Hills Community Service District. Uh, the formation of that has taken up uh, probably almost a third of our time uh, over the last year. It, it's that complicated to get through that process. Uh, so uh, in this next year, we are expecting, uh, in 2024, we have a number of projects that we're expecting to hear from. There's a group of property owners that are considering the formation of a new water district. Once the city of Bakersfield and the county get their arena numbers approved by the state, we should start seeing a flow of annexations from the city of Bakersfield again. Arvin should be back with an annexation for the proposed, for, for the property we extended services to earlier this year. Golden Empire Transit will possibly have a rather large annexation, which will be the first in over three decades. East Kern Health Care District will likely be sending us a large annexation to bring the Indian Wells Valley into the district. Uh, I am encouraging California City to perform a municipal service review as they have been struggling for several years and have been through five or six city managers in the last three years. There are several districts that I won't name that are considering dissolution or reorganization. And all, is, all this is to say that 2024 should be an interesting year, and I look forward to the challenges and opportunities ahead. With that, I turn back to the chair with one last shout out to the community of Wasco, my proud hometown. Worthy of a shout out. Okay, if there is no further business, um, the next scheduled meeting will be February 21st. Correct. I do have a comment. <laughs> Go ahead. Right. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Cadillac had their annual conference in Monterey last month, I believe, and city staff was there, and they did a great job of providing some nice rooms. City Not city staff, county staff, <laughs> LAFCO staff. I <laughs> uh, didn't want to demote you. Um, and then <laughs> the, uh, the um, um, I lost my train of thought. The uh, workshops were quite varied. There was one that caught my attention. I believe staff was there. I can't remember. You, you can correct me if I, if I say something incorrect. The, uh, present, one of the presentations was from uh, um, the City of Paradise. Anybody familiar with the City of Paradise in Butte County, Butte County, up north? Unfortunately, even though it is a beautiful place, it was substantially burned down, and, and now there is a, an intent to rebuild. During the uh, disaster, which unfortunately um, I think uh, happened some time ago, there was an EOC meeting or two, and believe it or not, um, the county, Butte, had their LAFCO director on the uh, committee, so they were doing some emergency planning, and um, the Butte County LAFCO director spoke and explained how they contributed to the emergency disaster planning and response. And I was wondering, that's kind of cool. Um, so I called the county EOC recently, and that's emergency office of, I'm not sure if it's EOC staff or EOC center, but when there's an emergency, they uh, activate EOC. And I spoke with a nice lady, I believe she's the deputy, and she said, when they do have that uh, activated, there is different agencies involved, just not county folks. They have uh, maybe the state or utility districts, et cetera. But she kind of liked the idea of reaching out to not only LAFCO, but potentially Kerncog to see what they have to offer in case of an emergency. And I said, they might have something that you might want to you know, be aware of. But 
you're best off just giving them a, a call, the executive director and executive officer, if you want to go there. They, she asked me some questions, and I said, I'm not the one that can answer that, but I do believe it's something you might want to investigate. She said they might do that in the future, and I'm not sure if that's something uh, LAFCO would want to do, but uh, in case there's an emergency, your skills and uh, resources might be available to the county if they ask you to, to attend an EOC meeting. So that's it. Thank you, Vince. I'm going to do this one more time. The uh, ex general manager of the Rec and Park District in Paradise is a Wasco High alum. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do what, it. Sorry. What is the what is the mascot? No one has ever said tigers. the tigers. The tigers. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, everyone have a happy holiday season, and we'll see you in February. Absolutely.